I'm advisor Maya Watt here with the College Connection Center here to tell you a little bit more about the new FAFSA. So FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. The FAFSA is something that you are encouraged to fill out if you are a student or are about to become a student in college. So the FAFSA can make you eligible for Filling out the FAFSA can make you... Filling out the FAFSA will determine your eligibility for things like the Pell Grant or subsidized and unsubsidized federal loans. So really we encourage anyone who is going to college or about to go to college to fill out the FAFSA. Now obviously there have been a lot of changes to the FAFSA this year, so I'm here to help redefine three new terms that you may have heard regarding the FAFSA. One of the new terms for the new and improved FAFSA is a contributor. A contributor is defined as anyone whose information will also be included on your FAFSA. Though it is often your parent, it can be defined as any legal guardian, perhaps a spouse, or even one of your parents' spouses. So contributor is meant to just be a more catch-all term than what was previously likely just listed as a parent. If you're an independent student, you likely will not have a contributor on your FAFSA, unless, of course, you're married, but you and your partner filed separately instead of joint when you completed your taxes for the previous year. But mostly contributors are something that dependent students are going to need to know about. A recent update also involves the change that your contributor will not need a social security number if they do not have one though you as the student will still be required to have your social security number. Your contributor will not need a social security number. In previous years, there was a term known as the Expected Family Contribution, or EFC, which was the FAFSA's way of determining how much money your family would be able to contribute to your college education. This year, the calculation to determine how much your family can contribute to your education is now known as the Student Aid Index. Another change is that your Student Aid Index, though it can reach zero, the same as your EFC could, the SAI also has a possibility of returning a negative result. Now, that doesn't have any negative impact on your aid, that is simply the result of the calculation. So don't fear if you get a negative SAI. Finally, one other major change in terms of terminology is what happens at the end of your FAFSA. In previous years, you would yield what is known as a student aid report or an SAR, and that would be what you send along to colleges. This year, we have what is known as a FAFSA submission summary. And the FAFSA submission summary will tell you more about how many grants or loans you may possibly be eligible for. So to quickly review, a contributor is anyone who adds their information to your FAFSA. The SAI or Student Aid Index is a way of calculating how much money your family will contribute, as well as how much money you may be eligible for in government loans and grants. And the final summary that you get upon completing the FAFSA is known as the FAFSA Submission Summary. That's all the terminology that I would like to cover today, so thank you for watching and have a great day.